Two major systems are brewing, and between Friday and early next week, the heat turns extreme and storms could turn dangerous. So if you live anywhere from the Northern Plains to the Great Lakes, here's what's coming and when. So let's dive right into our forecast. And we are going to start big picture. This week's forecast is shaped by two systems, one that's developing now and another one that is digging in by late week. Both are driven by the jet stream, high pressure across the southwest, and a deepening trough across the north. And as we begin our day on our Wednesday, we see that high centered over the Four Corners region, out across the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. We have that trough digging in with that northwesterly flow, bringing in those thunderstorms across the northern plains. We also see a little bit of a low pressure trough over northern California. That's going to move east as we begin our Thursday. And it's going to be a short wave trough that ejects out into the Rockies, into the central plains, brings storms Thursday into our Friday. But then we watch that next trough digging across the northern plains as we go into Friday, into Saturday. That is going to keep our constant uh, storm chances going through this upcoming weekend. And some of these storms could turn very dangerous. We're going to talk about that just a little bit later. So here we're going to look at the jet stream. Again, we see that little trough across the west that ejects out through the Rockies. The one across the Ohio Valley moves out. But we watch this for this storm development Thursday into Friday. And then up here with this trough digging in. That's our Friday into our Saturday storm. This one isn't as strong as we initially had thought it might be earlier in the week, but it still poses a severe dangerous risk for the upper plain as we go into the upcoming weekend. And then right behind it, we watch yet another trough beginning to develop that will skirt across the northern tier Monday into Tuesday of next week. So this pattern doesn't show any signs of slowing down anytime soon. In fact, if we look and we take each day by day, here's Thursday. We see this little short wave trough here across parts of northern Colorado. That's going to provide the mechanism for storms across the plains on our Thursday. We watch that trough across parts of Alberta and Saskatchewan making its way south and east. Here becomes our focus of storms for our Friday. And look, we have the jet streak here, the valley, and then out of it we have diverging winds, which are indicative of strong developing thunderstorms and dangerous thunderstorms at that. And as we move towards our Saturday, that low moves across parts of Wisconsin and Minnesota. Still we have out ahead of it those diverging winds uh, as, as the air parcels race through the jet stream and out in a divergent X. So again, we have several days of possibilities of severe weather coming up. Friday and Saturday are our biggest concerns, and both the Euro and GFS models show a classic severe weather setup across the upper Mississippi Valley and possibly down through the Ohio Valley. We start to see this as we go Thursday into the day on Friday. The afternoon heating provides those storms. We kind of die that out as we get into the early morning. But then by Friday afternoon, we're firing new storms around Iowa, Missouri, through Illinois, even into Indiana. That's going to die out as we lose the heating of the day Friday night into Saturday. But then we're going to watch again for the reformation Saturday, this time across the upper peninsula of Michigan and down across the southern central plains all associated with that uh, trough that is pushing its way south and east. Storms could fire anywhere from Oklahoma into Texas by the time we get to our Sunday morning. In fact, if we look at our Thursday, the Storm Prediction Center has gone ahead and highlighted parts of eastern Nebraska, northern Kansas, and western Iowa for a slight risk of severe weather. As we go through the day on our Wednesday and we get closer to Thursday, I fully expect this to be upgraded to an enhanced, if not a moderate risk. And as we get into our Friday and Saturday, those maps are still a little too far out, day four, day five. So the models are still coming into some sort of agreement. But I wouldn't be surprised on Friday to see a slight or enhanced risk across the Dakotas. Then as we go into Saturday, across Wisconsin and Minnesota, and possibly across Oklahoma into Missouri, as we see the southern part of that system make its way through the central plain. And we will have the timing of all of these storms and their development and locations as we get into our Friday video. But let's walk through the future radar to time out those storm chances and where the impacts could be the highest. So we're here looking at the Cape values. This is the measure of instability in the atmosphere. We see it explode across the Northern Plains Thursday afternoon, calms down Friday, but then Friday night, it's here across Iowa, Missouri, Illinois. As we get into our Saturday, it's through the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, back through Oklahoma. And on Sunday, it is in that same general area. But as we get to Monday, we're gonna watch another flare up with that next trough digging in across the Northern Plains, same as in Tuesday, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri. So we are going to see day after day and round after round of the potential of severe weather anywhere from the Northern Plains through the Ohio and Tennessee Valleys back through Oklahoma and Texas. The reason behind this is we have a lot of energy, a lot of instability, and if we get enough lift, enough shear in the atmosphere, that can really spin up those storms as we make our way into the middle of next week. But before we get there, we are going to be talking about some extreme heat 
Meanwhile, parts of the southwest and central U.S., they are roasting. Temperatures will climb into the 100s and stay there for several days. And we see this on our Wednesday. We have 90s through Texas, 100s in Kansas, even 100s in eastern Montana, potentially the Dakotas out across the desert southwest. 150, 120, Las Vegas, you're approaching 110 degrees. But where we have that trough across the Ohio Valley and the Northeast, temperatures here are being held down in the 70s and 80s. We have scattered afternoon storms across the Southeast that will limit temperatures in certain areas where the cloud cover is the thickest. Here we have 80s and 90s, 90s stretching their way all the way back up through New Jersey. And as we go into our Thursday, it is much the same as that trough continues to influence the weather through the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley into the Northeast. 70s and 80s. The southeast, you're still dealing with those scattered afternoon thunderstorms. But look across Kansas. We are warming well into the 100s, mid-90s, all the way up into southern Manitoba, far northwestern Ontario as we begin our Thursday. But right behind it, as that trough begins to move out of Alberta into Saskatchewan, we have 40s, 50s, and 60s. So we're definitely going to get a clash of the air masses across this area as we go into our Thursday. But the desert southwest doesn't really change once. But even the interior of California is warming up. And we see that on our Friday, 80s and 90s across the south, across parts of Texas. But here comes that cooler weather across parts of Wyoming into the Dakotas. This is 50s and 60s. Again, this is where now we're going to see that area start to set up. Eastern South Dakota, eastern Nebraska, western Iowa, and western Minnesota for the threat of severe weather on our Friday. Out east, we are warming into the 80s and 90s. But we could even see near 110 degrees as far north as Northern California, near Sacramento, for our Friday as we end this week. The deserts, you're cooling down, albeit slightly, to about 105, 110 degrees. And we take this through the weekend. The warmth continues to build out west with temperatures in the 90s for eastern Washington and Oregon. Rebounding, again, across parts of Montana, warm across the south. And that warmth now moves into the northeast. 80s and 90s are becoming pretty prevalent. But where we have that next round of severe weather for our Saturday, Minnesota, Wisconsin, the UP, this is where we're going to be held down in the 70s and 80s. But we get ready for that next system. The warmth on Sunday continues to rebound through the central plains and out behind it across parts of Alberta. It's almost a repeat of what we saw on Thursday. Temperatures here in the 40s and 50s clashing with that warmer air just to the south and east. And this is why we think Wyoming, Montana, the Dakotas, you're going to be in play for severe weather on our Sunday and out across the west. It's again, warm, warm, warm. That is the name of the story. And this pattern, it doesn't just end this coming weekend. The trough digs deeper and it brings more chances of severe storms into early next week. So let's put this into motion. This is our Monday 500 millibar anomaly map. So we see that trough making its way across parts of Manitoba into Ontario. So we have somewhat of a zonal flow that we are getting a little bit of ridge out west. But look, we see that those lines continuing to form from the northwest down to the southeast as we go into our Tuesday, into our Wednesday. This is going to provide the mechanism for continued rounds of severe weather across Montana, the Dakotas, the Northern Plains, into the Ohio Valley as we go into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So this pattern doesn't show any signs of stopping. It's too far out to know exactly where the severe weather is going to set up. We will have more details on that as we get towards Friday and next week's video. But I wanted you to notice particularly this persistent northwesterly flow as we get towards Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week. That keeps our storm track very active across the United States as we make our way into the third weekend of July. And the thing also that I want you to notice is look at this. This is 24-hour plots of total precipitation. And so we see as we go into next week how that rainfall moves from Montana down through the Dakotas, down into the Ohio Valley. So we're going to see this rainfall almost in a, in a pretty much a steady line from Monday down through Thursday in the same area. So we can see some significant rainfall across this area, which will help the drought situation. And we expect to get an updated drought monitor map for the United States in our, on Thursday. And we will bring that to you in Friday's video. But I want to take a look around region by region so you know what to expect where you live. As we make our way into the Four Corners region for our Wednesday, temperatures here 110 to 115, possibly 120. 90s across parts of Utah, Las Vegas, you're at 108. As we go into our Thursday, it is more of the same. Hot in the deserts, 105 to 115. Across parts of Colorado, you're in the 70s and 80s. Denver, you're near 80. Across parts of New Mexico in the 80s and 90s. This is almost a repeat pattern as we go into our Friday. Warm in the desert, though, cooling down slightly into the 105 degree range instead of one. We'll take anything that we can get. But in terms of precipitation, most of that is going to fall across 
parts of eastern Colorado and eastern New Mexico as we go through our Saturday evening. Here we can see isolated pockets of one to two inches of rain, even in the panhandle of Texas, where you get under the right thunderstorms, you could see significant amounts of rain. As we look across the central plains for our Wednesday, I notice here parts of Kansas, we're 100 to 105. Even in eastern Colorado, we're approaching triple digits. Same thing up in Nebraska. As we go into our Thursday, that warmth focuses itself on central Kansas, 107, 105. Oklahoma, you're approaching triple digits. But up across the northwest, across parts of Wyoming, you're down into the 80s. The 70s and 80s make their way into Nebraska for our Friday. 90s are common across Kansas, as well as mid to upper 90s across Oklahoma and Texas. Missouri, you are in the mid 90s as we close out this work week. In terms of precipitation, it's really going to be dependent upon where those storms set up. But the thing I want you to notice is as those storms come out of Dakotas on Wednesday and Thursday, and they dive to the southeast Friday into our Saturday, it is across parts of Iowa where we could see significant rain. This particular model wants to put down in excess of six to possibly 10 inches of rain in this yellow to orange section of the map. Most of Iowa should see at least an inch of rain by the time we get to Saturday. More scattered across Kansas, under the right thunderstorm, one to two inches. Most other areas generally under a half of an inch through our Saturday. As we go into the Northern Plains, here's Nebraska, warm on our Wednesday, 95 to 100. Same thing for the Dakotas and Eastern Montana. Across Minnesota, you're cooler, 70s and mid 70s. As we go into our Thursday, a little bit cooler, about 90s. We don't see the triple digits across this area. Minnesota, you're now warming into the mid 80s for your afternoon highs. But as we make our way into our Friday, here comes that cooler air, that trough digging in. We're gonna have showers and storms across the Dakotas, keeping temperatures down in the 70s for our Friday. Out across Minnesota, the same situation. And as we saw across the Central Plains, it's gonna be dependent upon where we see the thunderstorm setting up. We could see a swath across North Dakota in excess of an inch, but the heaviest amounts of rain, again, are gonna be across parts of Iowa. But we could see a few stretches across Minnesota, across central Wisconsin, where we could see over an inch of rain. And looking out across the Mid-Atlantic and Ohio River Valleys, it is 90s across the coast for our Wednesday highs, stretching all the way to up towards New York City. Back across the Ohio Valley, 70s and 80s, where you're gonna have a little bit more cloud cover and storms. On our Thursday, temperatures warming there into the mid 80s. Still 90s across the Carolinas, 90s throughout Georgia. A little bit cooler across the Northeast. Parts of Massachusetts will remain in the 60s with that added cloud cover. But we rebound on our Friday with temperatures in the 80s and high 90s across South Carolina and mid 80s, which is seasonal weather for most of the Ohio Valley, stretching up into Michigan. But in terms of our precipitation through Saturday evening, we could see isolated pockets again, one to two inches. It is gonna be very dependent upon where we get those afternoon thunderstorms to pop and how persistent that rainfall happens. But I do wanna draw your attention here across parts of Maryland into New Jersey, into Delaware. Here, we could see some persistent rain through the next several days. That could lead to some rainfall amounts of four to six inches of rain in this part of the country. Something we're gonna be definitely watching and keeping an eye on here at the Weather Farm. But as we make our way into the Northeast, parts of Connecticut, you could see one to two inches of rain through your Saturday evening. So here's the bottom line. Friday and Saturday are shaping up to be very active with a significant severe storm threat from the plains to the Great Lake. And with dangerous heat building across the Southwest, this is a pattern that we need to be watching very closely. We will be back with a full update on Friday morning right here on the Weather Farm, and we'll go live if a major outbreak occurs. But we thank you for joining us here on your Wednesday. Stay safe. Let us know where you are watching. Drop us a comment. Make sure you like, subscribe, click that bell notification icon so you can be notified when we have a new video ready for to share with you and keep you informed of the ever-changing weather. Have a great day.